Hello and welcome to Junior Church once again. Did you see last week's Junior Church? Jim with John. If you didn't see it, it's well worth a look, but hey, not until you've watched this week's video. If you did see it, I don't know about you, but I needed a sit down when John had finished. So I thought this week we'd do something a little bit less energetic and we're going to play a family game. We're going to play Jenga. Maybe you have it at your house. If you don't know how to play Jenga, you start with making a tower of the Jenga bricks. And the object of the game is to take it in turns to take one brick out of the tower and place it on the top. Let's see what happens. Did you notice what made the tower fall? The tower fell when we took bricks from low down, when the bottom wasn't as stable, when the foundations weren't as strong. Jesus told a story about what happens when we don't build on firm foundations. You can find it in two of the Gospels, in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27, or in Luke chapter 6 verses 47 to 49. But I'm going to read it from this book. Stories Jesus Told by Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen. Because actually, I like the pictures. So are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. The House on the Rock. Here is a man. He is looking for a place to build a house. He climbs to the top of a big grey rock. Ah, here is a good place. The man begins to build his house. It is hard work. He puffs and pants. He puffs and pants and grunts and groans all day until the work is done. Just in time, he says, it looks like rain. The rain pours down, the lightning flashes, the thunder booms, the water washes round the house and splashes at the rock. The rock stays firm. The man was wise to choose the rock. Here is another man. He wants a house too. I want it now, I want it quick. This place will do, he says. He builds his house down on the sand. This won't take long, he says, and he whistles as he works. The house is done. He goes inside and shuts the door. A raindrop drops onto his nose. Oh dear. The rain pours down, the lightning flashes, the thunder booms. The water rushes through the house and splashes at his knees. 
the sand is washed away. His house falls flat. The silly man was wrong to build on the sand. So, two men, two houses, two storms, and two very different endings. What was the difference? What caused one house to survive and the other to fall? Well, it was what they were built on, wasn't it? Their foundations. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said this. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. At the moment, of course, we can't go to our church buildings to worship or to go to junior church or to go to our youth groups or to our uniformed organisations. But that doesn't mean that the church is falling down or that we are no longer Christians. Our faith should be built on more than a building. It should be built on firm foundations. So I wonder, can you think of any firm foundations of our faith? Here are a few of my thoughts. The main foundation, the cornerstone of our faith is of course, Jesus himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12 says this, Jesus Christ is the stone on which the other stones for the building must be laid. It can only be Christ. So Christ is the stone that all the other stones are laid on. So what are the other foundations of our faith? In the service for the grown-ups last week, the Reverend Yan Yan spoke about another foundation, prayer. Another foundation, of course, is our Bible, reading and studying the Word of God. Do you remember back in October when we were thinking about the Bible in junior church? And we said that the Bible could be summarised as love God, love others. So I think another foundation then is love. In last week's Gym with John, John said that the why stood for you, our relationships with each other. And so there we have another foundation of our faith, fellowship. Of course, at the moment, that's not easy when we can't meet in our church buildings. But this is fellowship, sharing junior church online, or maybe a phone call or a video call with family or friends, or even writing a letter or sending a card. In fact, the first Christians didn't have church buildings at all, but the Bible tells us that they shared fellowship with each other in each other's houses. Fellowship is a foundation of our faith. So if we have these things as foundations, Jesus, prayer, the Bible, love, fellowship, our faith will stay with us even when we can't meet in our buildings and our faith will still be there with us when we can. So as we've said that prayer is one of the foundations of our faith, we're going to spend a little bit of time praying for other people. And we're going to use some pictures of some buildings to help us. So let us pray. So the first buildings we're going to think about is our hospitals. And this is the Queen's Medical Centre here in Nottingham. And so we pray for all those who work in our health services and emergency services. May they have foundations of care, dedication, time and skills. This building is the school I first went to over 50 years ago. And so we pray for our schools, for teachers, teaching assistants, pupils and all those involved in help homeschooling. May our schools have the foundations of tolerance, helpfulness, friendliness, and a desire to learn. This building, of course, is the Houses of Parliament in London. And so we pray for leaders of the nations throughout the world. May their decisions have foundations of love, respect, and justice for all. These are pictures of our church buildings. And so we give thanks for the communities of faith in the Nottingham North East Circuit and the firm foundations of our faith. We pray that you will be our strength for today and our hope for the future, and that you will be the foundation for all that we are 
and all that we do, and all that we will be, and all that we will do. Amen. Our craft is really easy this week. What you need is a few stones from the garden, washed and dried, and then just some paints or felt pens or even chalk. And all you need to do is decorate the stones in a way that will help you to remember the foundations of our faith. So just use your imaginations. You could simply put a cross to remind you of Jesus or a heart to remind you of love. You could just write the words or draw a picture of the Bible or some figures to remind you of fellowship. You might even want to draw a picture of the wise man and his house on the rock. Then you could put them somewhere where you're going to see them often to help you remember the foundations of our faith. Maybe on your desk or a windowsill or on your bedside table. You could even put a small stone in your coat pocket so that whenever you put your hand in your pocket, you're reminded of the foundations of our faith, whether we're in our buildings or not. Well, bye for now. I'll see you soon. Bye.